If you want, it's Emily Fox. Today's video is going to be a very chill video where we're chit-chatting about the books that I've recently added to my TBR. Most of them are currently on my waiting list at the library because I love my library. Definitely recommend supporting yours if you can. I personally love to use Libby, the app, through my library. I can just get the ebooks or more often than not the audiobooks because the waiting list is shorter and I hate waiting. <laughs> so there's about like a third of them that I'm not going to mention because I mentioned them in my last video. I just have not had the chance to get to them or I just keep skipping them because I'm not in the mood right now. But a big chunk of them are actually out of my comfort zone, which I love using my library for that because I don't know if I want to commit to buying the book. And I'm trying different, very specific genres, you see. And it's just perfect to use my library for it. So uh, we're going to go through my list because I want you to let me know which ones I should prioritize, but also I want you to be Exposed to these books and you can decide if you also want to add them to your TBR. So let's get to it. But first, I wanted to give a special thank you to Established Channel for sponsoring this video. I am now officially Lady Emily Fox and you too can become a lord or a lady. When you purchase a title on the website, you get the certificate and you get your unique plot number. And I am now the proud owner of one square foot of land in Scotland, which gives me the right to be called a lady. I think it's a really unique and interesting way to preserve the forest in Scotland because they've committed to planting one tree for every order. And they work with global charities like One Tree Planted and Trees for Future to support global reforestation efforts. They will be keeping the entire woodland free from any other uses except peaceful enjoyment of it. And they will be keeping it protected. We're guaranteeing that the first 200 people that will use Emily Fox to buy their own certificate, we're going to be neighbors. We're going to be within a few minutes of walk to each other, our little plot of land. So we could have our own little book kingdom. Books with Emily Fox Kingdom. It's just such a unique gift to give for someone on their birthday or the holidays are starting to approach or even yourself if you want to. I feel like the possibilities are just endless. Like, can you imagine what you can do with that? You actually can even change your title on your credit card. So I could be Lady Emily Fox on my credit card if I wanted to. They're currently having a early Black Friday sale. If you are interested, I will be linking all the information in the description box and on the screen. Click on it, check it out if you want. And you can even use Emily Fox as a coupon code to get another 10% off. Now, let's get to my endless TBR. I'm gonna try to somewhat keep them organized, but it's probably gonna become less and less throughout the video. But I've realized that murder mystery or like mystery thriller horror, the really popular ones on Goodreads don't really work for me. A lot of them are like domestic thrillers and a husband cheating, wife that is an alcoholic, I don't care. I'm just not emotionally invested. And even though they're really popular, 90% of the time they don't end up working for me. So I've been trying to like find different categories that work, like sub genres that work for me. And I'm currently testing a cozy mystery thriller, like mur murder mysteries often in like small town. <laughs> it's very specific, but I just read uh, The Magpie Murders and it was good, very cozy English little town. It was good. I'm currently listening to the audiobook of uh, book two in that series. So you know, uh, and actually even our Patreon book club pick of the month is the Thursday Murder Club, which this sounds so fun. I, I have actually like right now my phone is showing ready to borrow. So it's going to be my next audiobook. Uh, but this one is like a group of, like, I think it's four older people work uh, that are like approaching the eight, their 80s and they're trying to like <laughs> solve a murder. Listen, this is sounding very appealing to me lately. I don't know why, but it is what it is. Um, One that I recently added... Okay, it's Peg and Rose Solve a Murder, which I think from the cover, you kind of get the vibe that it's also going to be two older ladies trying to solve a murder. But apparently they're like sister-in-laws, they don't get along, so I'm assuming there's going to be like some bickering going on. And the vibes of the cover, you're going to see it for a lot of the books on this TBR. Um, they tend to be books that appeal to me more during the summer. They seem to be more like lighthearted more wholesome, less dark, like I usually read. But I've been trying to try different things because some of the current stuff I'm reading is not working. So it sounds fun. I will be picking it up and uh, we'll see. We'll see how that goes. But that cover is different, very different. Speaking of which, see what I mean? The vibe, this is summer vibes in my head, but it's a murder, cozy murder mystery. Uh, two part sugar, one part murder. They're calling it a delicious and charming cozy mystery. I'm assuming delicious because of the cake on the cover. But again, it's supposed to have like fun little dialogues, which I was staying away from, but I swear reading some Emily Henry just changed my mind about contemporaries. That one was a romance, but still, I was getting just burnt too many times. I just didn't care for them every single time. So even though I thought the covers were cute, I just knew they weren't going to work for me, but I'm trying it again now. But yes, uh, this one, small town setting, usually work for me and cozy murder mystery. So I'll let you know. 
It sounds really different from what I usually read, but I'm craving different. So I think this might be a good one to add to my TBR. Whoops, I closed the window, oh no. Oh, I also added book two of the uh, murder club thing, uh, The Man Who Died Twice, because I've been told that book one is good, but book two will be a favorite. So I added already book two to my TBR because uh, it's saying six months wait, so might as well. I'm number 89. <laughs> so might as well add it right now, considering um, I also have one more that is a murder mystery, but this one isn't cozy. This is The Cruelest Month by Louise Penny. This is the third book in the Chief Inspector Armand Gamache series, which I read the first two books, book one last year, and then book two this year in January. Uh, book one was good, book two, no. No, I had so many problems with it. Uh, the description of the characters, as soon as they were not slim, it was awful. I, I was really shocked compared to book one. Uh, book one wasn't perfect, but still. Uh, but this one was published in 2011, so crossing our fingers that things have improved. And I had been warned before I even started the series that the first two books were not the best one and then it starts getting better. But it's murder mystery in a small town uh, in Quebec, which, yay, representation. Um, so it's the last shot I'm giving to the series. I'm really hoping that it will change my mind because I really enjoyed, again, the small town vibes and the characters in book one. I love them. In book two too, but like the story, I didn't care for it. And again, all the problematic stuff, but I'm hopeful. It took me a year <laughs> to give it a second shot or a third shot, but we're doing it. We're doing it. Uh, but again, I have a couple weeks to wait at least. So, you know. But it's on there. I'm getting there. Oh, I didn't mention that I have a good good girl's guide to murder on my TBR. I'm just mentioning it because it's right there. But it's a Y, which I don't read a ton of anymore. But it's a small town murder mystery once again. Uh, in this case, a man, a boy, was uh, condemned, I guess, for the murder of a young girl. And then uh, the main character doesn't believe that he did it. So things will happen. I think that's mostly it for like the more wholesome ones, even though the last two I've mentioned weren't very wholesome, but let's get to the serious one. Uh, Penance. <laughs> this is serious because I read uh, Confessions by the same author earlier this year and it was dark. It was dark. Kind of dark academia, but it's like a, it was a murder mystery in like a school with like 11, 12 year olds. <laughs> it was intense uh, and I wanted to read something else by her, so I have now that one book uh, on my TBR. I've been trying to read more translation. The author is Japanese and I believe all of her books, or at least this one and the other one, are made were made into movies and apparently great. I haven't started them, but I'm terrible at finishing movies, so I haven't started them. <laughs> but, you know, if you're interested, check those out. But yes, I have Penance on my TBR. I also have one more that I forgot what it was about, but I kind of don't want to look into it because I want to be surprised. <laughs> but it says that it's like a fast pace revenge and like murder mystery. So uh, look closer. I don't know what it is about more than this, but I will go into it, let you know. It's a new release. So I tend to try a couple of them and let you know which ones I enjoyed. And uh, I think that's it for the murder mystery section. Uh, now we have a couple fantasy. I have not been reading fantasy. I don't know what's going on with me this year. Same with sci-fi. They're usually my two main genres. Not this year. That's why I'm trying to like try different things, see what I'm in the mood for. And then, you know, I'm hoping next year I can go back to my normal. Um, so I have two main ones. Uh, the first one is the Dawn Hounds. <laughs> I think that's it. Uh, the description sold me, but also it was recommended to me in my comment section. Same thing with the other one. I do listen to you. I do. In the description, it's compared to Gideon the Night and Black Sun, which were both really strange, but really good and different fantasy. It's a queer debut novel uh, fantasy about a police officer who's murdered and brought back to life. And now he has like a special power and he has to protect, you know, the city against evil. So. I'll try it out. I'll let you know how it goes, but that seems fun and different from what I've been reading, but still enough fantasy elements that, again, I will be hopefully starting to read them again. I also have Nettle and Bone. This one was recommended to me so many times, and it's because I've been complaining <laughs> that I want to read more wholesome books in that I love witches, but every time that it's like in more contemporary setting, not this one specifically, but like you'll see with the other ones, I feel like they don't end up working for me. Like I love practical magic, more the movie really than the book. Um, but I want to read more witches and more wholesome stuff. So that was one of the ones that was recommended to me by you. And apparently, again, wholesome and even a bit funny. So 
super open to try some of that. I don't think I would have picked it up otherwise because that cover and even title, no appeal to me, but I, I trust you, I trust you. And then I also have uh, The Witches of Moonshine Manor, which is supposed to be like a modern day coven of witches. And it's supposed to be like a magical heist gone wrong. And again, like I was saying, wholesome-ish uh, modern time witches. Cause I recently, if you haven't seen my last haul video, where is, oh my God, it's at the bottom of the pile. Let me grab it. I'm so confused. I thought I saw that book and now I can't see it. Uh, which is something, it looked cute. In, uh, I bought that one, but then the other ones I added to my TBR to try them at the library. But they all seem kind of wholesome, maybe a hint of romance, fantasy a bit. So I want to try them. Maybe they will become some new favorites because I really want to like modern day-ish witches, but I don't have a favorite yet. So we're working on that. I still have a couple of non-fictions, which it was one of my challenges this year to try to read as many as possible. Usually I read maybe about 10 a year. And this year we're about to hit like 100, 30. <laughs> that was still impressive. I don't know why my brain went to 100. So I have a couple that are on my TBR. The first one is The Rise and Reign of Mammals. So I read the one about dinosaurs from the same author and I enjoyed it. I feel like once in a while getting something that is like heavier historical kind of science-y is fun, you know, once in a while. And I enjoyed the one about dinosaurs, so I wanted to try his newest release about, you know, mammals to us. So we'll be listening to that one as an audiobook. Once again, the audiobook, the waiting list was shorter. So, I mean, heavy topics like that, that are not too complicated, I feel like audiobook is the way to go for me because otherwise it takes me forever to sit down and read them because I'm tired. But throughout the day, it's easy. You don't need to read a whole chapter. You can pick it up anytime. So a little tip right there. But yes, that one is on my TBR. I also have Salt, which is, I don't know if people think it's a fun idea or not, but it's like history of salt. What, what, what we did for salt. I mean, we went crazy for salt. So yes, it's like 13 hours, <laughs> almost 14 hours um, about the history of that rock that we eat. So I'll let you know, but that sounds fun. I feel like, I don't know if it's gonna be 13 hours fun, but I'll let you know, it might be. I've heard really fantastic things about this one, kind of surprisingly. So I have a good feeling about that one. Uh, I also have the Intersectional Environmentalist, which again, in my last haul, I did purchase a physical copy of it, but I might still try it as an audiobook. Uh, the audiobook is only like four hours. So we'll flip flop between the two, uh, but I wanted to mention it because it might be at your library. I did request my library to get it and they did. So that's why I need to listen to it. I think all the other nonfictions I have mentioned that I wanted to read them, like for example, Toxic Positivity. I have Patient Zero, A Curious History of the World's Worst Diseases. I have Burnout. I have Empire of Pain. I have, again, Sweat Feminism. And uh, everything I know about these dates, friends, jokes, love. So in case I didn't mention some of them, these are all the ones that are currently on my waiting list at the two libraries that I am subscribed to, I have a card to. Oh, uh, last but not least, uh, Sex Matters, which I have mentioned in my last wrap up, uh, the how male-centric medicine endangers women health, women's health and what we can do about it. Because I mentioned that there is one weird anecdote in there and I want to have the exact quote because I was calling out the author. And I mean, I can't do that if I'm not 100% sure, right? Because I'm gonna mention it again at the end of the year. So I wanna be sure I have, I want to have the exact quotes. So I got it back from the library. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure what I heard, but you know, I want the exact quote, so. And then I have uh, Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow by Gabrielle Zevin. I read uh, the story, life of A.G. Fickery and really enjoyed it. And I wanted to try something else by her. This is a new release and I got an ARC, an advanced reader copy of it. And it got like archived because I had a chance, before I had a chance to finish it. Um, so I need to get it again so I can actually finish it. I'm so annoyed at myself for not finishing it all the time. Uh, but it was about like two friends uh, that are working on a video game together. And it was good so far. It just got returned before I had a chance to finish it. So. It's on me, it's on me. So I got it from the library and I should have it, uh, the ebook in about 14 weeks. But you know, letting you know, I am in the middle of it and it was good so far. I think most of the rest I have mentioned, but the ones on my wish list, there might be a couple more 
Uh, I was told that Other Birds was also really, really good. So it is on my wish list at the library. So whenever I have a spot that empties from the waiting list, I will be adding that. This one is more like magical realism, I think people were saying, but apparently very lyrical and that it was worth me giving a shot to magical realism, which we don't always get along, but you know, gotta try it once in a while. I also added In Cold Blood because I was looking at like the most popular like murder mystery, thriller, horror books, and I've added a couple that I wanna try out, like the most popular of all time kind of thing. And I hadn't heard of it. Uh, I don't know if it survived a test of time that well, but I wanna try it because again, I'm trying to figure out exactly what works for me. Uh, there was also a new release that I added, uh, Take It Back. Again, do not remember whatsoever what it is about, but it's on there. So this is the Empress of Salt and Fortune. Again, don't remember what it is about, but it's on there. I think it's a fantasy. Is it possible? Yes. I think this might have been also on list of like unhinged women. I feel like I keep seeing a list of these books and I don't always agree, but like, how do you call it? Like female rage, unhinged women. Um, I think I'm going to do a video about some of the best ones that I've read, like revenge. Like, I think this is literally gonna be the intro. Like, if you think Amy Dunn did nothing wrong in Gone Girl, this video is for you. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna work on that. I'm gonna make a list and let you know my favorite ones and maybe more that I personally didn't care for, but you know, adding to your TBR if you want to check them out. So I think I'm gonna do that too. <laughs> so I think that's mostly it. Uh, so these are the last, I don't know, like 20 books I've added to my TBR and the waiting list and wish list from my libraries. I love doing these videos. It kind of gives you an idea of what's coming up in the upcoming weeks, sometimes months, because... But that's the fun part of having access to two libraries. One of them I have for free, the other one I have to pay a fee, but I highly recommend if you can get access to a library to a bigger city not too far from you and having to pay. It's totally worth it as soon as you, you know, read X amount. So actually I'm due soon to pay it, which is like $100. But it's worth it. I use it so much, I get 20 books on my waiting list, so... Yes, uh, this is going to be it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thumbs up, subscribe. I will be putting on the screen more videos like the ones I've mentioned, actually my uh, book haul because that was fun. New books, it's always interesting. And I also put uh, my TBR for the month if you want to see what's coming up. Actually, I just posted a vlog, a read it or unhaul it, which I'll link that instead here. So you can click it, check it out. Uh, it was interesting. I'm trying to clean up my bookshelves and this is probably the most fun way of doing it. <laughs>